Our next question is from Emma M. Is there an optimal fasting regimen for women suffering from PCOS? Mike, I think this is a great question, and, and it's certainly something that has stumped a lot of people, myself included. I think in general, polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is what PCS stands for, is a very complicated clinical conundrum. And I, I think for many patients, it's it's frustrating, it's infuriating, their doctors don't know what to do, and, and I'm not going to pretend that I know what to do. But but let's go through what, what I think is now. So first of all, the, the syndrome is defined by having at least two of the three following. One, uh, menstrual irregularities. Two, um, signs and symptoms of hyperandrogenism. So that could be excess hair growth, acne, things like that. And then the third is, as its name suggests, cysts on the ovaries. So if a woman has two of those three things, we might say that she has polycystic ovarian syndrome. And in many cases, women have all three. Now this is further and somewhat complicated by the fact that there are probably four types of this. One type is clearly associated with insulin resistance. Um, and as you can imagine, we're probably going to talk more about that version. There's an inflammatory variant of this. There's a version of this that seems to be associated with taking birth control pills. And then there's all others, which, you know, we can sort of call that idiopathic or sometimes in med school we used to call this idiotic, which means we're too stupid to know the answer. So let's talk a little bit about what I think is probably the more common of these, which is the insulin resistant version. So what's happening here? More insulin, which is such an anabolic hormone itself, is gonna to lead to the ovaries producing more androgens. And obviously, more insulin also triggers visceral fat accumulation, which thereby worsens the insulin resistance itself. So insulin resistance, which leads to excess insulin in an effort to accommodate for the resistance at the muscle, also produces excess androgens and the symptoms that come with that, along with more visceral fat. And of course, this cycle sort of feeds back on itself. So what do we do about this? Unfortunately, there are very few studies on PCOS and fasting specifically. But what we do know is that anything that reduces insulin and anything that reduces insulin like growth factor one or IGF-1 is going to improve insulin sensitivity and improve the metabolic parameters associated with it. Now, we have pretty good evidence that fasting plays an important role in that. And therefore, by proxy, what I think we can say is, at least for the women whose PCOS is driven by this more insulin-resistant pathway, there is very likely a benefit from fasting on PCOS. But I want to caution by saying, I don't think that means that fasting is a magic bullet for PCOS. For example, we know that metformin, a drug that is commonly used in people with insulin resistance and even type 2 diabetes, can have benefits in PCOS, but it's not a ubiquitous benefit. In my view, that tells us kind of what we already know. The underlying cause of the PCOS is probably what's going to determine how likely it is to benefit from the treatment. And I suspect that the women whose PCOS is responsive to metformin are probably also the women whose PCOS is going to be responsive to fasting. You'll recall I also said that one of the categories of PCOS may be due to hyperinflammation. And I think there's reason to believe that fasting can also reduce inflammation. The way I think about this is, I think anyone who has PCOS would probably benefit from at least trying fasting. But mm -hmm. if it doesn't work, I wouldn't beat yourself up and say, well, I'm fasting incorrectly. I think it might be that maybe I need to look for other explanations for the syndrome. When a person is diagnosed with PCOS, are they generally told which variant that they have, the, the inflammation-based, the birth control-based, or the insulin-based? That's a good question. It probably depends on the, on the doctor and their understanding of it. So I, I'd hate to generalize, but in, in, in my limited, limited experience talking with women who have been diagnosed, it, it's, it's often the case that no, they haven't been given that information right. um, or they haven't had that discussion with, with the doctor who's diagnosed them and it's been more of a blanket diagnosis. The good news before we leave this topic, Mike, is that a lot of the markers of insulin resistance are not subtle, right? Elevated levels of insulin, elevated levels mm -hmm. of fasting glucose, elevated levels of what's called postprandial glucose, glucose after a meal, elevated levels of IGF. And of course, that says nothing about all of the excess androgen markers. So 
In addition to following the benefits of fasting, you can also look for these biomarkers to be improving. Because remember, cystic ovaries by themselves are not the problem. There are many women who on incidental findings have cystic ovaries, but they don't have the clinical symptoms. Where I think women are bothered by this is not because they have cysts on their ovaries. It's by the hyperandrogenism. It's by the infertility issues, menstrual irregularities. It's the symptoms of this that are problematic, not the fact that one has cysts on the ovaries.